Hey, what's up world? This is The Goal Net. Thanks for tuning in. This is my second attempt at an unboxing video for the TGN by Optic Gear, um, which you can buy via the Goal Curries out of the Toronto area. One thing I'd like to point out while we get out of this, um, I'm promoting the Goal Curries store because they were nice enough to let me go nuts and partner with Brian's and develop a spec and then give people an opportunity to purchase that if they want it, but I'm not getting paid for this. I'm not getting a commission, so please don't misinterpret that. I'm just more thanking somebody who let a dream of mine, which is to kind of design my own personalized set of gear, come to life. So again, huge thanks to Brian's and the Goal Crease for letting that happen. So first things first, what is this set of gear? So I recently got some optic gear uh, four or five months ago, back in October. Uh, got it a little bit before the launch and was fortunate enough to wear that for a few months, demo it, and write some reviews for everybody. But one of the limitations to getting access to the gear earlier was that I couldn't customize it. The only thing I was allowed to change was the boot angle and really get a logo put on it. Um, but as you can imagine, when you buy Brian's, one of the great things about working with them is the ability to customize almost all the pieces of the gear. It's not true bespoke, um, where they're gonna build it, you know, each one's one off for you, but it is the most customizable product in terms of taking their stock offering and tune it, you know, with the specs to make it perform how you want to perform or changing the graphics. So this product is officially called TGN Spec by Optic. And again, it's available at the Goal Crease as Brian's and the Goal Crease for my two partners for this project. So first things first, the graphic. I've been pretty fortunate on Instagram with most of the stuff I've done so far that I get to seem like uh, a lot of very encouraging results from people. So it's awesome that people kind of like my style and the stuff that I'm doing has grown. However, this set of pads has gotten some hate and it's just crazy for me because I think it's gorgeous, but beauty's in the eye of the beholder, as they say. Um, so let me explain what this graphic is, why I have this graphic, and hopefully I'll win some people over. And if not, I love it, and that's what really matters. And I've skated them already once. They perform pretty ridiculously. So I don't think we'll be having too many complaints there. But anyway, let's dive into the graphic a little bit. So first things first, I'm a huge fan of the solid colored pads crew. It comes in different orientations where my last set was all red. Uh, this sets a combo black and red, but basically the only rules to be entered into that crew is that you can't have any white on your pads. Now, truth be told, I might have some other demo equipment floating my way sometime soon, so you might see me in some gear with some white on it, but that's life, you know. Um, doesn't mean every set of gear has to be perfectly solid colored. But this set of gear is something I plan to keep for a long time and will basically be my gamer gear that I wear for games. And until anything kicks it out of the bag, any of the other new demo gear that I demo will basically be limited to practice sessions. And I'm a big believer in wearing what works. So if I happen to demo a blocker or a glove or a set of pads or a mask or pants or whatever that's better than what I'm currently wearing, once I'm convinced that's the best stuff to use, I will transform it out. But right now I'm highly confident that Brian's Optics is the best gear for me. And that's why I purchased another set of it and went through the customization program to make something that I'd be really, really happy with year over year. Because as much as I love demo and gear, there's something to be said for the consistency of kind of showing up to a game and knowing what you're gonna be wearing. So we'll see how long these last in the bag. But as of right now, I really hope that's a long time because I love this gear and I really customized every single thing about these to make them exactly what I want. So the graphic. This graphic took a lot of inspirations from different places. A lot of people think it is flames, and that's not the case at all. I do see that, I do understand it, but it is actually a combination of a bunch of different goaltending influences I have. First things first, this was designed to mimic the Potman graphic. That was my favorite graphic growing up as a kid. That's a little bit cliche, I know, but it was just so sick. That, you know, if you watched goaltending in the early to mid nineties, Potman's cohos were insane. However, I respect people's design work, people's copyrights, and I'm personally not a huge fan of asking one company to put somebody else's graphic on their pad. And that's a future article that I'll be writing for thegoalnet.com and had some great interviews with people like Jerry Wright, who designed the iTech mask, which is now Bauer, or Don Strauss, um, which designed the famous armadillo mask worn by John Van Beesbrook, Kelly Rudy. 
And there's pretty much a consensus out there that we don't find necessarily as consumers, but it's just really not cool to ask one company to put their graphic on somebody else's pad. So if I really want an old Coho graphic, and I know companies do it because they're happy to you know, support the consumer, and I understand that, and just because it's my opinion doesn't make it right, but I'm not a huge fan of doing that. So I challenged myself to take a design that I loved and do something inspired by it that's not exactly the same. So my first thought process was figuring out how to do something that was Potman-esque, but not straight up Potman. So that's where this all started. So hopefully that makes sense. I know there was a little bit of a lot of background there, but hopefully it makes sense. The purpose of this graphic was to give me my dream Potman set without blatantly ripping off Potvin um, or without kind of stealing Coho's design and asking somebody else to do it. Second thing, Brian's is killing it with the custom graphics. They have been for the whole heritage of their company, but really in the last two to three years, they've got a stable of guys in the NHL that just have swag and have some really cool graphics. So I tried to look at some of their key guys and pull different elements from their graphic to pull this one off. So first things first is local former Blackhawk Scott Darling. His last Chicago set, which was just all black and red, I thought was insane. Um, so I wanted to kind of use that for the colorway. And obviously my team has red in it, if you haven't figured that out by my last solid red set. Secondly, Eddie Lack. I love the minimal look that he has in a lot of his graphics, where the graphics always only down in the boot area, doesn't go up too much higher on the pad. And there's really limited to two or three colors. It's not busy and generally like it'll be, you know, like a white base and then a couple colors at the bottom. And then the third is Anti Ranta. And there's actually a couple college goalies, uh, Halford and uh, Ranky with the same graphic. And this boot portion right down there is actually his exact like colorway zone just stripped out of that graphic and put on the boot to mine. So it gives me that Poppin-esque feel but still a very distinct Brian's graphic. So the next thing is the materials and let's dive in closer for that. So the boot is red weave just to give it some pop um, to create a little bit of texture in the all black area. We went with a standard Gen Pro trim and that's also in a little bit of the high wear, high bend areas because that is one of the downsides of this material right here, which is the Cordura. So we'll see how well the camera can focus there, but that's it. It is basically an industrial canvas grade material. Uh, different forms of it have been used in goaltending equipment for a long time. And Brian Heaton, Mike Vaughn, Pete Smith, some of the legends of goaltending design were all using this material on goalie pads in the late 80s, early 90s. And it was the first attempt at using a material to reduce the outer skin of the goal pad. Now we know with things like Bowers Odin project, that's commonplace, but in 1989 or whenever they were first doing it, it was pretty crazy, but it is still a material that has some of the best combinations of lightweight and durability of any material out there. This material is still really common on uh, side gussets, um, backhands of gloves, like it's still used in gear today, but the one thing that has changed so that it's not really common on the face of the pad. I wanna say maybe Eagle was the last people to use this in large quantities on the face of the gear. So why don't companies use it if it sounds like such a wonder material? First things first, it's matte. Some people love matte, some people hate matte, but aesthetically, it's different. I love the contrast and texture this creates, but again, it's just, it's not for everybody. Secondly, with the texture on it, I'm literally here is that it's really hard to clean puck marks. So as white's the dominant gear color, it looks really dingy very quickly. Um, you can look at uh, like Bill Ranford's pads, Vaughn when he won the cup with the Oilers from memory, those looked really dirty after a while because black puck marks and dirt on white Cordura, you know, make like a grayish color. So that's the second reason. And the third is as great as its wear properties are, um, there are certain areas of the pads like that um, where if this Cordura had to wrap over, um, it's not a great material in that versus like the Gen Pro there. And then thirdly, it doesn't slide. So if this were on like the landing gear, you know, you'd stick a little bit. But as you can see, the pad face itself is actually raised up very well on the brine. So this Cordura is never going to touch the ice. You know, this inner edge is technically a wear area, but again, with how this is raised up, it shouldn't be too high of a wear. So I'm pretty confident using this material. Obviously, until I've owned these pads for six months, we probably won't really know that officially, but again, 
had some consultation from Brian's, the folks at the Gold Crease, and my own knowledge. So pretty comfortable. This should be good. And again, I love the matte look. So again, that's one last close-up on the pads. Let's take a look at where I used it on the glove. So on the glove, we've got the red weave. We've got the black Gen Pro trim. We've got the lightweight Cordura here. And then in that area there, you can see we've got another texture. That is actually Black Nash. Um, I had that on a Coho 590, well, technically 585, which was the 590 glove with 580 graphic in college and had it on a Brian's genetic for a long time. And I just love the soft feel of the Nash. So I've got the Nash there and actually inside the T. And this glove has the anchor T, we'll dive more into that. And graphically went with the old school Brian's logo. And I mentioned I had a lot of influences for these pads. That is from Garrett Sparks. Um, he's a local Chicago guy too. I actually skate out of the same rink as he does and never met, um, maybe we will someday, but Saw that on a set of hits pads, thought it was fit, sick, and thought it was a really cool detail to work into mine. As we look at the blocker, red weave on the bottom, the Gen Pro, Gen Pro trim, the Cordura, and then on the side here, got the Gen Pro in any of the high wear areas that could touch the ice, and then the Cordura there, the retro thing. And then anywhere in this pad, I've got it kind of hidden on the back, but this is kind of the call out for the brand name of this pad, it's the TGN spec. And if we look at the back sides of the pads here, you can see that I've got it on the thigh rise. All right, so before we move on to any of the physical specs, just to recap, graphic was inspired by Felix Potvin, the current stables of Brian's Pro Athletes, my old personal color preference for the Solid Colors Pads crew, and lastly, lightweight design with texture. So I was trying to incorporate a lot of things, and for anybody that hates my pads, Maybe that's a lesson learned that you shouldn't try and mix in too many things and maybe keep it to one or two influences. But again, they killed it. Um, I really don't have much negative to say, if at anything right now. There's a lot of emails back and forth uh, with Jaws, you know, with the guys, Grants at the Gold Crease, uh, Rio, and they knocked it out of the park. And for those of you that don't know much about gear manufacturing, the more you customize a piece of gear, the more difficult it is for the manufacturer the less customization, the easy it is. And that's just because when you're making the same thing time over time, it's way easier to produce them and crank them out. But when I basically customized every inch of these pads, that makes it nearly impossible because each one of these pieces is now a one-off custom for me. So you may not appreciate it, um, but what pays for this gear is the manufacturing industry. So I really do appreciate how well Brian's was able to work basically from uh, a napkin sketch and a bunch of thoughts and ideas to making a tangible 3D pad that is just phenomenal. All right, specs. So I think the pads probably have the most changes and might be the most interesting in terms of the weight. So we'll do those last and we'll be annoying and kind of start with the blocker and work our way out. So basically the only thing I changed on the blocker was the material choice. So, um, I want to say this is Gen Pro on the stock optic, got rid of that. This is Gen Pro, this is Gen Pro. So got rid of all that, and you can see a little nylon wear there, and didn't really change too much else. The one other custom spec on this is that this has what I'd call the double padding option. This is something that Craig Anderson does, another Chicago goalie wearing Brian's. And this will have two pieces of padding where they normally put one between the back of the wrist and the back of the blocker board. Purpose of that is twofold. Um, I love it because it makes it snug, it's super tight. And then secondly, it pulls the board further away from your hand, so it kind of increases the range of motion. So Dennis at Factory Mad actually helped me with that option on my original genetic retro set. And I loved it so much that I've been chomping at the bit to get into an optic, so super tight fit. And then for anybody curious, I didn't uh, get rid of it. I'm a big fan of it, and that's the BOA system. Nice thing on the blocker is that it's pretty much set it and forget it. I think maybe in one game in about six months of use, I had it pop off and next whistle, you know, it's kind of sitting like that. So still wearable. Uh, next whistle came, grabbed some water, tightened it up, but it's great because it doesn't stretch. Um, it just stays there and the amount of resolution you have with each little click is phenomenal. So you can get this really at just the perfect tightness. And the reason it's on the blocker is that it just gives you more control than a nylon strap would. Um, here's the Velcro 
um, pad that a lot of people were skeptical of. I'm a huge fan of it. Just gives you uh, a little bit more cushion for hard shots there. Um, and it's not really too heavy in terms of adding weight. So you get the, you know, protection, lightweight. And then lastly, if you haven't figured out by the double padding there, I like a blocker that's got a snug feel. So this makes everything more connected. And one of the things I asked for, which I don't really think there's a fix for, but I was hoping um, to try and keep the sidewall as square as possible. Uh, many times, like I had the same thing happen when I won S, the original optic, with these really thin sidewalls, it kind of pops out a little bit over time. It doesn't affect the performance of the blocker. I mean, as you can see there, that's got some decent, even though it's thin, it's got some pretty decent foam right there, um, but it's just an aesthetic thing. You know, I like my blocker to look square and not have my sidewall poking out. So uh, hopefully that is able to work. But again, that was pretty much my only complaint on the original optic blocker, and that's just aesthetic. So you can't really fault Brian's for that. You know, I didn't really have an issue. I never took a puck to the sidewall, um, got hurt. It's obviously not the thickest on the market, but the goal of this product is to be lightweight. So I'm pretty happy with it. And if you're not aware, Optic Palm is smaller. Older Brian's palms had a big giant palm. They shrunk this down for the Optic. Uh, more in line, but it's a stock. Fits your average hand size way better. And then the index finger has the nice padding on that. So any pucks fly up and ramp, get a little bit extra padding on the index finger itself. All right, next up is the Optic Gloves. So we've talked about the graphic. I went with the Optic T, or excuse me, I went away from the Optic T and I went with the Anchor T. So why did I do that? The big in vogue trend right now in goaltending is the double T. I've used a double T on and off my whole life. Uh, my first like nice glove I had was a Cooper Reactor 3, not the janky Reactor 1 that probably everybody started with, but the Reactor 3. Had this great double T named the Pit. Um, then I used Heaton gloves, then I used Coho, then I used Brian's. And again, certain models had the double, certain had the single. I'm a big fan of the single tee because when the puck hits it, it just really has this snap and you don't get that same snap with the double tee. The benefit of the double tee is that it's wider in there. It's got more surface areas, so the pocket stays open and supposedly um, supposed to help with puck retention. It might sound arrogant, you know, not being in the NHL by any means, but I've just never really had a pop out um, except for one glove with a pro palm I had trouble catching with, um, with getting pop outs. So I value that feel of the puck snapping and hitting the tee way more over the puck retention benefit of the double tee. So you'll probably never see me use a double tee unless I'm testing something stock where the glove they send me has got a double tee and I don't get to pick. So I was really on the fence about getting the standard optic tee or not. As the standard optic tee is probably three-ish width, maybe even four of the anchor tee. So you get the benefit of the nice wide pocket like the double tee. Um, so for that puck retention, but you still get that snap feel. Uh, but I was really trying to figure out what tee I wanted to go with. And of anything have I obsessed over in terms of designing the set, it was probably the knee landing and the tee. And just based off some feedback from uh, the guys, the goal crease and jaws, you know, the anchor tee is the most iconic Brian's tee. Um, the great thing about it is that it's got so much surface area that even though it's not wide, you get great puck retention because um, if the pucks hit over there, they catch. And based on my skate with this glove yesterday, it still has that great feel, um, you know, when the puck hits the tee and snaps. Another great thing is there's not a lot of material there. So the closure on this thing is freakish. As great as my original optic glove was, this thing is literally better, which is kind of mind blowing. Um, let's open it up. You can see I kept with the BOA, huge fan of that. And one of the reasons I love the BOA so much is that it's actually kind of allowed me to, so we got a Velcro up top, two boas, is that I use this one tighter than I ever wore an elastic strap. And then I wear this one relatively loose. And it just, for me, seems to be the right combination of my glove is like securely on my hand. It's not sliding out, but I still have the closure that I want. So it's great that I have security, but the glove just sits in my hand a little bit looser, which allows my hand move to really close it. So if we look at it from the front, so that is out of the box, one skate and no other breaking other than I put something to stretch it between skates. And the seal, let's close that, strap my nuts. The seal on this is just insane. Um, so other options I customized. So first thing was the T. 
Second, which is functional to get the soft kind of grippy feel, is the mash inside the pocket, inside the tee. The third thing, most people don't understand this, but the optic glove is what Brian's calls a double break. So the stock optic will come in and will break like this. And you can see it's a clean edge. That is called, I'd call that on break. And that is designed to be baseball glove style closure, finger to thumb like this and it closes on there. So you buy a stock optic in a store, that's how it's gonna break in. But how I broke in my optic and how you can do with really not much effort is the overlap break. And as you can see, we can now see all this additional piece of glove. When I say overlap break, that's what I mean. And that will give you a little bit more of fingers to thumb, or excuse me, all fingers closure. So on seam, gonna give you fingers to thumb, baseball style closure, whatever you want it. Overlap is gonna give you a finger skewed, finger oriented closure, which is my preference. So in terms of specs, I asked Brian's to actually break this in in the overlap position, which as you can see, got this insane seal. You can see the overlap, not a single gap. And just because gloves I used uh, growing up closed that way, I don't use my thumb that much when I catch the puck. I'm all fingers. Uh, Dennis at Factory Mad is probably cringing hearing that right now, but I'm an honest guy, so that's how it works. But as you can see, I mean, that's just, you can hear the closure, the overlap. I mean, that is ridiculous. And again, use this yesterday and this still has the snap. And the last spec on this is that it's the skate lace pocket with a one inch extended tee. So again, this is the glove. All right, so we're down at floor level now, and the last thing we will take a look at is the actual specs on these pads. So first things first, this is a fly core pad. Um, I like my pads stiff, and the word stiff is not consistent across all brands. Some brands' definition of stiff will be way stiffer than other brands, and some definitions of soft will be way softer. So for my money, the Optic Fly is just like the perfect combination of you know, the pad, as you can see, flexes when I want it to flex, but it's so nice and stiff. Um, from what I can tell with my other optic pads, they held it shape. And if we look at torsionally, a little bit of give, um, but nothing too crazy. There's some other pads, if you do this, you can almost bend them into a V shape. So again, some people may like stiffer, some people like softer, but for me, this is just a great combination of a little bit of torsional flex, um, you know, pretty good vertical flex, which is I want my pad to flex this way. What I don't want is my pad kind of twisting. It's kind of twisting and warping like that, and the optic doesn't really do that. So the specs are 35 plus five, or excuse me, 35 plus 1.5 on the height. And again, it's the fly core. Optionally, you could get flex. So first thing I changed aside from the custom logo is the knee landing. I'm a big believer in a soft, cushy knee landing. Um, so I went with the thicker material here versus the stock optic, which is a very thin nylon. Fortunately, like I mentioned, uh, bought this set of gear, so I had to sell my red set to pay for this set. Um, and unfortunately, the person who bought them, as you can imagine, was really anxious to get them. So didn't have the luxury of kind of doing a side-by-side -side comparison, which would have been awesome. So check out my other review to see some of the optic components and kind of compare them one-to-one. -one. But anyway, back on point. So a little thicker, cushier knee landing. And then secondly, this is the non-slip grip. So that when I'm in my butterfly, my knee will be a little bit stable. Um, so as I go to change direction or pivot while I'm already down, have a nice grippy feel surface. Inside the leg cleaner, kept the stock Brian's Aesthetic material, which is awesome. Um, that's also inside the glove and inside the blocker. This is the same stuff Lululemon uses. This is silver fibers, antibacterial. So really good for reducing stink um, and keeping bacteria off your gear. So here are the wraps. Um, so here's where we get into some of the customization. I had an idea for really cool strapping, but I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it or not because I never tested it. So this set of pads actually came with two set of straps. As it sits now, this is what I call the, like, the current TGN spec and it might change based on current performance. So to give you maximum customization options, I actually separated the knee landing from the X strap. Um, this piece is basically eliminated and the stock optic strap looks like this. 
I wanted a little bit more flexibility, so I separated them. So essentially the X strap will go down there at the calf. The neat strap goes down there. And then here's the killer feature is my version of the professor strap. So this is the Brian Smart boot strap. It goes down through here, through the D-ring, and back there. And I have a loose, independent, uh, fixed, non-flexing professor strap, which is tight. And then I wear the uh, elastic a little bit looser in these areas. So this is something I will continue to play with and really dial it in and pick what my favorite set of strapping is. So I skated in these once. This felt great. Um, I don't know if I actually need the independent pieces here, so there's a chance that I might go back to the connected elastic. We'll see, can't promise, not sure, but as of the first skate, was loving my version of the Professor strap here with the nylon seatbelt style material um, connected through the D-ring, which moves out over here, you know, sits outside the wraps. Um, and I also posted some pics, they're in my story under the save, but you can see everything fits together. And then secondly, I don't ever do the knee flap and I don't like my knee pads connected. So I removed both of those two pieces in saving weight. So I didn't actually request this, but Brian's did it, which I'm perfectly cool with because it gives the pads a super clean look. So stock optic, just Velcro's on the outside, but given I don't have the Gen Pro or the striping graphic, that might've been ugly. Um, I replaced the standard Gen Pro with the Cordura material. So I give props to the guys at Brian's for coming up with a nice clean solution. So they went with the older style Sub-Zero closure. And I mentioned two sets of strapping. Right now I have the elastic strap, um, but in the box over there, I also have a nylon strap and that'll give this a little bit more of a fixed connection, um, which is something I kind of borrowed a few years ago. Um, CCM and a grad student put out some research talking about different type of strapping to optimize performance. And I think there was some really cool science. Um, I believe the gentleman's name was Ryan maybe who did that. And so I was kind of applying his ideas that were kind of in my memory from a couple of years ago. So I'm gonna mess around. And that was one of the reasons I went with the nylon strap here and the nylon strap here. And in full disclosure, I actually met him um, a couple months ago in Montreal, which was pretty cool. So great guy. Um, so that's a custom strapping. And then in terms of other stuff, I eliminated any boot hardware. I don't wear boot straps. I think that if you use any form of elastic toe tie, it's kind of old fashioned. And the other interesting thing I had is that I love the offset boot position. So the standards Brian's toe bridge probably comes to there and gives you two strapping locations. This is permanently in the offset position because I know that's what I like, so I didn't need the adjustability. And then these shift with Brian's Intermediate Smart Toe. I like these because it feels tighter against your skate. Um, it gives you a little bit more benefit of the motion of the elastic skate. The standard senior version, for my money, just feel a little bit too loose and too much like a skate lace. This feels a little bit more elastic, which is the feel I want. I will be changing these out though. Um, I'm a huge fan of the Pro Laces Armor. I've had those on this will be my fourth different set of pads, um, sometimes with the original Pro Laces and now with the new armor. And those things kick ass, the durability is great. So as soon as those come in, I will be replacing my intermediate toe straps, but that's probably a few weeks. So I'll get some continued skates. So last but not least, let's get the scale going. So full disclosure, um, you know, I did an unboxing the other day. I've already worn these, so I kind of know what they weigh. For whatever reason, uh, my scale isn't amazing, so I've gotten slightly different readings every time. So we'll see how it goes. But let's take a look at the glove right now. All right, so my scale is back to zero. And we're coming in at 2.25 pounds. So I will compare that to my red glove um, and write that up. But Roughly from memory and the math I did the other day, you know, coming in at 2.2 pounds is about 5% lighter than the stock. All right, here we are now. We're going to take a look at the blocker. And we're in at 1.5 pounds. I want to say the stock optic blockers like 1.65 maybe again. So we're in the ballpark of 5% savings. The real savings we're going to see is on the pad. Um, the Cordura doesn't save a whole ton of weight, but hey, 5% is 5%. 
And aesthetically, I would have thought it was silly to have a Gen Pro glove and blocker in the corridor on the face. So as you can see with the blocker and the pads side by side, they're almost perfect mirror images of each other. And there's a lot of symmetry and a lot of balance. So no all right, so here we are, probably the moment a lot of you were tuning into. What kind of performance benefit are we getting from the crazy Cordura material from anybody that's not familiar with it? So we're coming in at 4.687. Pretty consistently. I have a picture to prove it. I'm not making it up. The first day I weighed these coming out of the box, I got like... 4.49. I don't know if it, that's because I had the other nylon strap and I've got the elastic. But anyway, my stock optic pads were coming in at 4.9, so like just under five pounds. So as you can see, you know, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, that's a pretty good weight savings. And again, this is a 35 plus one and a half pad. For reference, my Brian, or excuse me, my Bauer 1S medium. So those would be about two inches shorter. The shorter the pad is, the lighter it's going to weigh. Those were about 4.6 pounds. So keep in mind, this is pretty ridiculous um, to have a pad this tall and this stiff um, that weighs this little. That's one other thing to point out too. So if you're not aware of it, HD foam, which is what you use to make a foam core pad stiffer or a blocker stiffer is heavier than light density foam. So any pads on the market that are lighter than this are probably using more light density foam, which compromises the stiffness so you really need to understand that fact to fully appreciate that this is the lightest, stiffest pad that you could really buy or create in this size. And again, there's new stuff on the market. I haven't held 2S, those might be lighter. Oh, got a little visitor here. And, uh, and yeah, so you've gotta really understand that to appreciate it. Even in Brian's old world, if you were comfortable with a softer pad and went with the flex core, I believe you save another three, four ounces there. So we might be down at like 4.2, 4.3 uh, pounds per pad. So I'm ecstatic with this. I mean, I'm really happy. Brian's killed it with all of the specs. And as I mentioned, if you don't know, it is really, really hard to do something this customized and like without having me at the factory um, or out sitting, you know, and sitting down with Rio, but just going back and forth over email. I mean, Brian's killed it. The pads are light, warm yesterday. Um, they seem to perform great, so I'm pretty excited about this. So hopefully some people see this, some guys that are as hardcore gear nuts as I am, or girls, and want to emulate this set. And I would encourage you to call the guys at the Gold Crease and inquire about getting your own version of the TGN spec. And one thing to keep in mind is that it's Brian's, so if you don't like the fact that I use Cordura and you want to get Gen Pro there, or you like having the upper knee flap there and you wanna add that back in, this is just a starting point. Very similar to people who are ordering Darling Spec gloves or Darling Spec pads over the last couple of years. These are TGN spec, but it's custom. So hopefully you guys use this as a starting block and go from there. So hope everybody enjoyed this video. This went way smoother than last time with uh, the Instagram Live and the web issues I was having, but head over to thegoldnet.com to ask any follow-up questions. Thanks again.